Hello and welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. This is a reading for Aries. If Aries is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your reading. Please hit the like button, leave a comment, consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. Now, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger. And I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Aries, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. First card today is the world or universe card. This is a pretty powerful way to begin a reading. Um, let's put that into some context. All right, we're going to use our dove and serpent spread. Move our alien out of the way a little bit. And as I do this, I'd also like to say if there's anything you need me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know. All right. We're going to finish up Path of the Serpent here. It seems like we've got a lot of court cards today. Uh, a lot of good energy. Mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. Let's select from the Smith Waite deck. I love this little tiny deck. Borderless. Whoa, there's a nice card. We'll use that one for something else. For our mystery card, we're going to select this one randomly. Frog on top. We're not going to look at it until the end. And hopefully at the end of the reading, that will tie everything together and give us the confirmation that we need at the end. Okay. So the card that... Oh, there was two that came out. There were two cards that came out. Death and the Ten of pentacles. So we're going to go ahead and put these down too because these are important in some way. So we're going to have to kind of dig through these energies and see how everything connects. All right. It seems like there's a lot going on just right away. We've got air, air, water, water, major, major. We've got these court cards. We've got some fire and some water, a little more fire, some earth, a little bit of earth. Now, the two cards that flew out of the deck, we've got some Earth and we've got that Death card. So, first of all, I feel like there is going to be a transformation in your finances, okay? Um, <clears throat> and I think that is a very kind of uh, basic interpretation, a very, very general statement. But just these two cards together, it shows that whatever, whatever, uh, whatever things you value in your life, Okay. They're going to go uh, undergo a transformation in order for you to, I think, fully realize um, your potential and what you're creating. We have a lot of other creative cards here, right? We've got this magician, this Mercury energy in the immediate future. This is the way forward. And this is really about recognizing your potential, recognizing your power and making things happen, right? This could be those business deals. This could be um, you know, putting on a, a shirt, a nice tie, a nice outfit, uh, getting your hair done and going and getting that job that you want, right? Walking into your boss's office and, um, and getting that promotion or meeting with investors or whatever it might be, right? This is the confidence to make things happen. Now, I don't know exactly what you've got going on in your life, but I feel like you are a builder. I feel like in your eyes, I feel like the world is your oyster, right? And this is always a really, really good card. It's always a really good feeling to think, man, I can do anything I want. The problem with this card, though, is that it's so, in some ways, open-ended. You know, this is saying, yeah, you can do anything that you want, but do you know what you want, right? Do you know what it is that you're working for? Do you know what job you're going to try to go get? Do you know what business you're trying to open? Uh, do you know, you know, what the, um, what the end game is, what the conclusion is, what is the, the finish line for you? Well, I think this card's saying that there, there really are no finish lines, right? We can temporarily um, ascribe a border around our universe and say, okay, this is our world. You know, we build fences around our yard and we say, this is my yard. Um, but in fact, in the universe, in the world, there are no clean lines, right? There are no very def well-defined boundaries to anything. 
And I think it becomes even more apparent when we get to, you know, the cosmic scale of things and the, the universe, whether it's infinite, whether it has a boundary, whether it's expanding, whether it's contracting, whether there are, whether it's a multiverse, you know what I mean? There, there's just, there's no way to know what the boundaries are here. So as much as this card represents, um, you know, the, the Saturn energy and establishing a boundary, a border, keeping things confined to a specific area, right? It's you have a goal in mind and that's your, you're limiting yourself to that goal. You're focused. That's good, right? That's the discipline of Saturn. But this card also represents that element of earth, which is um, just looking to, to crystallize, just wants to give form to things. And there is no, there is no direction in this, right? So in order for this card to really be, be activated, we need some other energies. We need this air energy as much as air energy is most often not really wanted in a tarot reading, right? If you've noticed the air energy pops up and most people are like, oh gosh, some air energy. Sometimes air energy can be very good. Okay. And I think just to clarify what I'm kind of talking about or what I'm feeling with the universe or world card, I feel like you have the energy, the ambition, you have the drive, you are goal oriented, right? You kind of, you, you want this, but what is it? Okay. You want it, but what is it? And how high should you set your goals? Should, how high is your bar? Well, I think personally that your bar should be as high as you can imagine, right? Shoot for, shoot for the stars if you just hit the moon or the sun or whatever, a tree. That's still pretty, pretty darn good. And from there, you'll be a little bit higher and then you can keep shooting for the stars. I don't think you should lower your bar. I think this card is saying that we may need to refine our vision so that we know how to get to where we're going. We have to be able to see a destination. Um, we can't just say, I want to travel, but not have a, an area in mind, at least a general kind of um, a general point on the globe that we want to maybe sort of get to around there somewhere. We need at least that, right? We need at least um, a reasonable kind of destination. It doesn't have to be pinpointed, but a, a region at least. And I think that's where this Four of Swords is coming into it. This is kind of the X marks the spot. This is the, uh, the crosshairs, the target. This is being able to refine our vision just enough so that we at least know like, what, uh, you know, what plane to take or what ticket to buy. You know? We want to know generally where we're going so that we can start the journey. Because I think you have all of the, all, all the ambition, you're doing it for the right reasons, you have the strength and the stamina, you have the inspiration, you have the will, you have the creativity, you have the confidence, we just need to refine this vision a little bit. So it's very interesting that we have the universe and then we have the coordinates, right? The point on the map. So these two cards together are saying that, look, you you want to achieve, you want to be successful in your life, we need to at least be able to plot a general course. Okay. A general course. And that's what these crosshairs are about. This is the, you know, the X marking the spot, uh, you know, uh, the coordinates, the point event in time and space, but in the future, where kind of where we want to be. You know, I mean, you can throw a dart and it'll hit a particular point. Okay, let's go there. Spin the globe, pick a, pick a spot, you know, maybe it's the middle of the ocean. Um, wherever it is, at least you'll know how to kind of get there. But um, it's a little bit more complicated with you than just throwing a dart or spinning the globe, right? Because you have a lot of ideas. Here's the Princess of Swords. You have a lot of ideas. You want to do a lot of things and you're not going to settle for just some random, you know, throwing a dart. You know, 
It's like me when I go to my, my library and I just, I'll close my eyes and I'll just wave my finger around and I'll just point at a book. Okay, well, that's what I'm reading this week. Um, I don't think you roll like that. You know, I think you like to have a little bit more discernment, a little bit more, um, you know, intention in this kind of a thing, especially if we're talking about the rest of your life or what you're going to be putting your effort into or how you're going to go about making money or, you know, advancing or, or whatever it is that you're really working toward. So you reject a lot of things is what I'm saying. You know, you, um, you have a lot of ideas and you think, no, not that one. No, not that one. So then we are taking our time, trying to do this the right way, trying to figure out exactly where we should go, what our plans should be. It's like trying to pick a major at university. There's a lot of different things to choose from, you know? And yeah, you could pick something and then a little ways into it, change your mind change your major. Um, I don't know if that's really the way you roll either. I think you want to pick something and you want to stick to it. Now, this could be a major in, in university. It could be a career. It could be some kind of um, creative endeavor, something that you're going to put your energy into. It could be just choosing what crops to plant this year, you know. But I feel like it's kind of more than that. I feel like it does involve your finances because we've got this death card and this 10 of pentacles that jumped out of the deck. It kind of was saying, hey, we need to talk about the money, the finances, the career, the, um, the, the state of being wealthy and successful. Well, what is that? This is kind of, this is your end point on the map. This is, and you know, it has that X on there too for the Roman numeral of 10. But that's kind of the X marks the spot again. This is the goal. This is you living that wealthy life. The cards are really tiny, but you can still see. This is you living that wealthy life. This is kind of the future vision that you have. This is where you want to be. But I don't know the coordinates here. I don't know the address. You know, I don't think you quite do either. But we know that we want to get there. And this is the death card that is trying to... Well, he, they're on a horse... So they're traveling and they're just cutting away things that are not for them. Things that have outlived their purpose. They've outgrown their, uh, their time in your life and it's time to let those things go. So as we're, as we're traveling, we're still trying to refine our vision. We're still trying to wait for the, the GPS to get a really like, um, you know, a really pinpoint location on where we're going. We are still in the process of letting things go that aren't working for us as a way for you to kind of lighten yourself, to become more streamlined, more lean, more efficient, so that you can reach this goal of success and wealth and luxury and happiness and, you know, whatever this, uh, whatever this uh, destination is. So that I think is the name of the game and you're a little bit, um, you're a little bit picky and rightfully so. You're very discerning. For you, everything has to have a foundation of love. Here's the two of cups. You have to be, basically you have to be in love with the idea. And if you don't feel that, no matter how swell it sounds rationally, if you don't feel this passion for this path that you're on, you're going to reject it. And now I think the Princess of Swords is all about rejecting things. Right? We, we reject a million things until we find that one. And that, that's, what you're, that's what you require. I think anything that you commit yourself to, to this degree, something that really has, I mean, your, your life in its hands, your future in its hands, there's a lot at stake here. So it has to have this foundation of love. It has to be something that you're absolutely in love with. Okay. Now, where you are or where you have been is this six of cups. 
I think that you have been um, generally doing some kind of work that involves um, maybe charity. I'm getting this really strong feeling of you like giving things to other people or sharing what you have with other people. I mean, you could be like a like a Doctors Without Borders or like um, like a food uh, pantry or something, you know, where you're you're giving to others. Um, and I feel like that's the kind of work that you really have been doing. And I think you've been thriving in that sort of work that almost like a charity, almost like a Doctors Without Borders or like a, I don't know, like a Red Cross kind of thing or um, something along those lines. Okay. Uh, maybe volunteer in healthcare or something like that. Because I feel like it really brings you a lot of joy to help people. It brings you a lot of joy to um, express your love and care for other people. You know, to see that through your efforts, other people are maybe smiling a little bit. Maybe they're just, um, they're rising out of their suffering a little bit because of something that you're doing or saying or, you know, uh, something that you're contributing. And I think that's, I think that's a lot of the, um, the recent work that you've done, or maybe in the past, maybe that's kind of generally what you've, what you've done. Um, and now the candle just went out and there was a puff of smoke there. So I think I'm onto something. Um, yeah, it's strange, the timing of these things. So I wonder if that's something that you're considering, um, staying with or, advancing or maybe specializing. Maybe you're trying to hone in on a kind of a new target for that work or um, to specialize in some new skill or go back to school and train for something more specific or more specialized, more technical. But there's this real, real ambition and, and all that's right here in this fire energy. We begin and end the path of the serpent with the fire energy, but first we've got to talk about Mercury a little bit, the magician the Magus here. This card is, it, it's been showing up a lot lately. And the general message is that, look, it's through your own efforts, through your networking, your communication, your confidence, you going out there and talking to people and, you know what I mean? Connecting with people and doing the necessary steps, taking the necessary actions to to create this, you can do anything you want. But that's the kind of the kind of irony of Mercury here is that you may try to unite with so many different things, and that again with Mercury, with with the uh, you know the physical element of Mercury, it will try to combine with so many different um, you know molecules or compounds or whatever they are, but it can't. It always tends to separate or it's easily separated and it's always mercury. It can't really, it can't unite with anything. And that's the problem with this card is that it's so, it's so fluid and yet it's so individualistic. You know, it can enter into combination with literally anything and it can do the dance, but then it's always separated and it always remains just itself. It doesn't really take on any of the qualities from what it does. It doesn't lose anything. It's, it's not changed in any way. So it's, um, this is, is someone who can immerse themselves in any situation, any career, any project, any path at all. But they never really feel like they're a part of it. They never really feel united with it. So this card is, is very tricky because you can literally do anything and you'd be successful at it and you would get a transformation of your physical financial life. You would get this 10 of discs. We can get to that future, but even if we're in that future, we're going to feel kind of like an imposter Mercury here. Like the magician that's just creating these illusions. Yeah, I'm right in the middle of these illusions, but I'm not a part of this. It's almost like you're the only thing that's real and everything else is the illusion. Sometimes we could feel like it's the other way around. 
but it's a tricky card because you can succeed at, at all of these things. So it is part of the game, maybe just figuring out the best possible choice that we can make and succeed at it. Even if we don't feel like we really belong, we don't feel we're a part of it, we don't feel like we've really united with it, we just pick the, the path that maybe satisfies the most of our requirements, our ideals, you know. Um, or do we keep searching for that one path that maybe that one substance that can dissolve mercury, right? That magical elixir, that uh, alkahest, that um, the, the philosopher's stone, right, that can completely dissolve mercury and enter into combination with the path, with the one path, that, that one that we're kind of looking for with the two of, of cups down here. And I don't know, that's, uh, that's the tricky part here. That's the tricky part. But this card says that you can create the successful future. You can continue to create this future for you. You can uh, fully realize this future. This is the vision of our future. And we're, we're already traveling in that, in that direction, okay? And along the way, we're going to have to let things go. We're going to have to pick up new things. We're going to have to know when to recognize that things have run their course, that things have kind of outlived their usefulness, and we have to let things go. We can't just bring everything along with us because, I mean, it's just one horse, right? So we have to learn when to set things down so we can travel lightly. But your future is really unlimited. And I know that's like a blessing and a curse because I just sometimes feel it would be easier if we didn't have so many choices, right? If you weren't good at so many things, it'd be easier to pick the one or two things that you're really good at, that you really are in love with, and that you can feel fully immersed in, in an authentic way and avoid some of this, uh, this trickster mercury kind of a conundrum, right? What we also have is the Prince of Wands here. You're very, very ambitious, very energetic. This is representing some of this essential Aries fire energy. You know, when you, uh, when you choose a path, when you pick something, when you agree to something, you do it, you follow through. When you um, get fired up about something, you're all in, right? You don't hold anything back. You go, you go straight for it. And this is going to be very useful when you determine what exactly your coordinates are. What is the destination that we're kind of entering into our GPS here? You know, and that's, that I think is the big the big question here is this the center the, these two cards what we started out talking about those um those energies are what we're really trying to figure out here okay the rest of it as far as your energy your success your your ambition your creativity your fire you know your ability to make progress that's not really a question you know the question is where are we focusing all of this all of this energy of ours well, in your environment, I see this queen of pentacles. I, I think this might be an older feminine earth sign person in your life. If they're not an earth sign. Now, I know I always say this. If they're not an earth sign, then the earth element of this card is representing the fact that they are kind of in a supportive role to you. Okay. They might be, um, you know, taking care of things while you figure out your stuff. Do you know what I mean? Um, this is a really stable and secure environment that you don't feel pressured. You don't feel rushed to hurry up and figure your stuff out, right? I think you have either a nice foundation, a nice kind of, um, you know, some savings or you're living with family or you're just, you're set up fairly well right now. So there's not a lot of anxiety about, um, having to hurry up about, trying to be successful now because, you know, we've got bills to pay. We all do, 
right? So I think you've got a lot of resources now or there's someone with you that is allowing you the opportunity to kind of take your time, figure out what you really want, okay? And I think that this, this is a very wonderful thing to have. It's a very supportive environment. Could be a particular person uh, generally, but it's the environment itself is kind of, it's, it's got you, right? So you've, you've got a little bit of time to figure out what you want to do, where you want to go. Uh, but again, I'm going back to these two because the name of the game is transforming your physical financial life. We're trying to get this. We're trying to get this Ten of Pentacles, right? That's the, that's the kind of, that's the goal that we're, we're, in, we're aiming for. Uh, the Five of Cups here, this one's really kind of easy. This is what you don't want. You don't want to be disappointed. You don't want to feel that you chose incorrectly. You don't want to feel like it doesn't have this Two of Cups. You don't want to feel like you made a mistake. Um, you don't feel like there's some anxiety here. This is, again, this is the card that we don't want. And I think because we have such a supportive environment right now, whether that's our family, our friends, or whatever, because we have all of this support, we're not worried. We don't have this anxiety. This card is a non-issue. But that card also reminds us about the Two of Cups and says that, you know, whatever you're going to choose has to be this Two of Cups, right? We don't want the uncertainty. We don't want the disappointment or the regret if we choose incorrectly. Okay. So it might also be connected with the Six of Cups. You know, if that was something that you really enjoyed doing previously, or the same kind of work, maybe not in the same industry, but still with that vibe of giving and sharing and um, helping other people, right? Finally, we see the Nine of Wands. This is strength. This is the certainty of what you're doing. This is you making the choice, and there are no doubts, no questions. It is a 1,000% certain that what you're choosing has this Two of Cups, um, and it is the coordinates that we're looking for. It is our place in the universe that we've, we've found. We know our destination now. This is really the, uh, the conviction that we need and this is coming so i think it's still just a matter of rejecting trying experimenting thinking and and saying no that's not the one you know you don't have to accept something just because you feel pressured you feel like you're taking too long to decide take as much time as you need take as much time as your environment will allow uh, but these things can't be rushed because this affects your future. It affects the rest of your life. But you will find the answer and you will have that conviction, right? Now let's go to this mystery card. Thank you, frog friend. I appreciate you. Um, I, don't, I don't know what I want this card to be. Something that's going to show um, us traveling that path toward, where is it, the Ten of Discs, right? So this could be, you know, anything made the chariot card. I think that would be cool. Um, it might be the death card again, honestly. Um, it could be a repeat of the universe card even. Yeah, there it is. A uh, repeat of the universe or world card. So it is, I see, I just got that, just got that little chill, the goosebumps, and I knew, I knew what it was going to be. Um, so it's a repeat of this, and this is very interesting because we began with this idea that, you know, look, the, the universe is infinite. There are no boundaries. We cannot really, we cannot specify any certain section of the world or of life that's ours. You know what I mean? It's so, it's so um, kind of unnatural to, uh, to fence things off, right? But I feel like now with this kind of smaller, like this is maybe the cosmic universe, right? This is the infinite universe. This is really, you can do everything and anything that you've ever wanted, right? You are an infinite, uh, expansive soul, your pure awareness, pure consciousness and spirit and energy. Um, everything is yours to enjoy and to learn and to experience, right? 
But then practical reality comes in and just says, yeah, that's true, but you still need to kind of section off a little bit of that for your current mortal life, you know? So we're going from kind of infinite borderless universe and we're just carving out a little section in there for us. And we know it's temporary. We know that this kind of violates our philosophy of the universe and, you know, it, it's unnatural or whatever. Like, we're, we're aware of that. We can hold these two views in our mind at the same time, right? We could believe that everything is infinite and, and nothing can be ever, you know, fenced in or anything. And we can also believe that, yeah, I kind of need to narrow things down. It's okay for you to be interested in a million things to some degree, some more, some less. Um, and it's okay for you to choose one particular thing to focus on, to choose one path. Okay. And I think that's where a lot of us maybe get into trouble is that we, we we're too much in the cosmic thinking, too much in the kind of the infinite uh, philosophy where I can, I can do everything. I love everything. I'm interested in everything. You know, again, I, I always go back to me and my library. I want to read every book in my library, but I don't have that kind of time. I have a mortal life that I have to consider, right? And um, so I've got I've to be selective. I've got to be discerning. I've got to make choices. I've got to carve out a little section of the universe. Out of this infinite, we have to select the finite. And I think that's what these two cards together represent. One's not better than the other. One might be more practical than the other right now, at this point in your mortal life, that you have to, you have to kind of section off the finite out of the infinite. And I know that doesn't make sense. That's kind of a paradox, and it's meant to be. Because if you could section it off, then it's no longer infinite, right? So we're holding both opposing views in our minds at the same time, and that's okay. Uh, it's also okay for you to join me for the extended reading, which we're going to do right now. Just click on the link that's up here. That'll give you access to all of the extended readings, not just for Aries, but for all of the signs. I want to thank you for taking this journey with me. Thank you for letting me read for you. And thank you for being the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot. Oh, that's not tea.